so warm welcome to um, all of you for this uh, at another uh, consultants connect uh, session from consultants consortium of chennai though we have planned this uh, sessions to be monthly sessions and then you know considering the series of industry programs also that we are doing maybe i think uh, we had uh, missed organizing this session in the last 3 months time uh, it's a pleasure to have all of you we did have about 45 registrations uh, for this program and uh, sometimes what happens is consultants do uh, look at the recording and uh, they try to uh, listen to the conversations and that's how it is and uh, consultants schedules are also pretty hectic like cbs and all that you're all aware um, it's a pleasure to have uh, the irf trusted mark team with us today uh, we do have uh, mr santosh kumar pandey who's the ceo and we do have mr uh, sudipto roy from irf uh, trusted mark uh, just for a quick recap as i was mentioning uh, this um, topic was uh, presented to us uh, in chennai about 4 uh, years ago if i remember right in one of our uh, annual consultants uh, meets uh, where i remember it was uh, tufsud uh, which did uh, present uh, a scheme and uh, it, this had actually triggered uh, our interest because at the marketplace where there are battles and struggles with uh, trust deficit uh, and the challenges the businesses are uh, facing to establish and to reconnect with that trust uh, um mark with the customers uh, maybe this is um, this is like a blue ocean uh, a strategy for any business uh, to go back and uh, rebuild on those uh, disconnected uh, links um it would be an interesting um, conversation today i feel and maybe after this uh, your uh, expert uh, session by mr pandey then we can have our uh, interactive session the q and a session all of us can ask uh, questions uh, today morning in fact there was an interesting conversation uh, twittered by mr rambi parmeshwaran who is a very senior uh, marketing expert uh, in the country where he was talking about uh, the customer decision making journey which was uh, kind of introduced uh, 10 12 years ago you know there was uh, i guess it was mckinsey which has introduced this in 2009 which was talking about consumer decision uh, uh, journey he was talking about uh, the evolution and uh, then today we are talking about uh, cx the customer experiences we are talking about so many things uh, at the same time uh, and then there is always all the businesses retail businesses always run after uh, improving their uh, customer lifetime value also somewhere in the process uh, a trust deficit that has crept into the system very strongly you know somewhere uh, this is not fi- uh, found a place in uh, most of the strategic uh, uh, plans of uh, most of the businesses also i think uh, businesses need to communicate and then you know maybe um, demonstrate uh, their customer focus uh, and uh, the trust building um, um, mark that uh, they are trying to build internally to their customers and to the marketplace and it's interesting like you know a standard which uh, we would say that uh, not a routine vanilla type of a uh, uh, product or a standard this there is a certain appeal for all of us to know a little more about it a little deeper about it what we did undergo at uh, the consultants meet about 3 4 years ago was very 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 uh, it's just about a uh, um, a basic uh, intro about the scheme but nothing more so it's it's a pleasure to uh, have um, mr pandey with us today let me just uh, quickly uh, introduce uh, mr pandey just give me one second please yeah. is the screen visible yeah so uh, mr pandey is uh, mr santosh kumar pandey is the chief executive officer of uh, irf trusted mark uh he is uh, a crrp professional a certified retail and real estate uh, professional with a post graduate diploma in business administration ehs um, uh, qualification in uh, is the certified in ehs initiatives also 
He's also a business turnaround uh, strategist and a specialist with more than two decades of benchmarking uh, success and extent, extensive management uh, uh, roles. He is the CEO of uh, the world's first body, certifying retail and shopping malls, real estate for adequate systems and practices for customers uh, with globally accredited certification bodies uh, like QACA, Bureau Veritas, uh, TUFSUD in accordance with ISO IEC 17025 certification process. Uh, Mr. Pandey is an expert in the certification process, compliances, customer experiences, practices and systems on HR, safety, IT, sustainability, uh, good service communications, transaction and accounting, et cetera. He's well equipped with uh, uh, broad-based uh, expertise and experience in providing a strategic direction to the shopping malls and uh, the retail businesses in the country. Uh, so oh, we welcome um, uh, Mr. Pandey to the session and uh, we also welcome all the participants. Thank all the participants uh, for joining the session. Over to you now, Mr. Pandey. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Rama, ma'am, uh, for that, you know, setting up the whole uh, context to this webinar today. Uh, also, for that brief introduction uh, of IRF Trusted Mark, you have gone back uh, good uh, five, six years, four, five years back when this was introduced and given us a highlight of uh, how this whole thing came into, the scheme came into existence, creating trust for consumers in this retail and shopping center industry. Uh, and uh, and special, uh, you know, mention to Mr. Anil, uh, who has also joined us for this webinar. It was his idea to, uh, you know, uh, get to the next step because he had been very instrumental a guiding uh, force for us when he was the CEO for NABCB. And uh, he's, he's been the one who's, you know, continuous touch with us and he's been guiding us to take it forward because he firmly believes this is a scheme which feel can make a lot of difference to uh, this retail and, you know, shopping mall industry. Uh, I thank all the participants uh, who have taken out time from the busy schedule on a weekend uh, to come and participate in this uh, webinar. And I look forward to uh, having a session which is informative and uh, we can derive some uh, value out of this uh, webinar and take it forward to the next level. Uh, yeah, uh, as I said, you know, this feel, it feels great and you know, it's, it's, it feels nice to be a part of this uh, forum where, uh, we all are working together in getting uh, various systems and processes, standards, regulations in place in various industries and trying to build in some kind of systems, adequate systems to uh, for customers in the, in the field of customer centricity. Because we all know that customer is the central focal point of uh, every business and you know transactions that we do, whether we are into the field of product or in the field of service, or whether we are in any field uh, which is, is related to consumers. So thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, thank you, Anilji, for being around. And uh, I'll just start uh, this uh, with a small note. Uh, why did this IRF Trusted Mark uh, scheme and where did it come from? What was the objective behind it? So some of us who have worked in this industry for, for many years now, uh, we felt the need that as a consumer, when you are going to... Uh, maybe two different shops of the same brand or two different brands altogether, a consumer uh, is, is entitled to have a certain standards of uh, customer experience, you know. So uh, there has to be certain benchmarking. There has to be some adequate facilities and systems, which was missing in our country. And uh, fortunately, this, this, this originated from our country. I feel really proud about it that it's a, it's a global phenomenon. It's something that can be that that other people can also learn from us. Uh, so it, it was a very extensive process of uh, defining the the complete structure of uh, this scheme. Whom was it uh, meant for? So I'll just share with you a small. Uh, Yes. 
Is my screen visible? Ma'am, is my screen visible? I think you're on mute. Yes. Uh, screen is yeah, visible. visible. Yes, yeah, yes. okay, okay. So, uh, what is this RF Trusted Mark all about? RF Trusted Mark certification is first of its kind in the world that certifies retailers and shopping centers for adequate systems and infrastructures to provide confidence to consumers, as I was saying. And this is in accordance with ISO IC 17065 certification process. How, what do we do? So, encouraging retailers and shopping centers to go for this Trusted Mark and thus ensuring implementation of global best practices and systems directed towards customer centricity. So the focal point is customer centricity. RF Trusted Mark helps certify, you know, certifies retailers and shopping centers in communication, you know, communicating this benefits of RF Trusted Mark. So when somebody gets RF Trusted Mark certified, we encourage them to go with this Trusted Mark certifications to consumers and, and, and you know, give them the assurance that because they are RF Trusted Mark certified, uh, they follow certain standards and practices. That's why the place is more customer centric, more safe, following processes, practices and systems are all in place. So they are in position to deliver an excellent customer experience. Consumer awareness is something that we expect the retailers to do. Now how it happens is there's a third party certification process, you know, that includes mystery audits, gap correction by applicants, followed by certification and annual surveillance audit done by globally uh, accredited certification bodies. And we, you know, work with, uh, uh, top uh, three certification bodies uh, who are uh, uh, who have the, uh, 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 the cert, uh, they, ha they are they have the uh, enrollment to do uh, you know trusted mark certification uh, process. Uh, they are uh, Quality Australia Central Asia, TUV SUD, and Bureau of Editors. Now, uh, is you know it's it's in accordance with ISO IC seventy sixty five which I mentioned in India the CVs are accredited by National Accreditation Board for Certification Body and ABCB, Member of International Accreditation Forum, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Now, what is more important is what do we cover and what are the areas uh, you know that we uh, emphasize through this trusted masking. So the basically. The certification process covers the following functional areas, which is internal audit, your SOPs, your documentation approvals, amendments, communicate, communicating those policies to consumers. Mystery audit is something that we generally do to just check the preparedness of uh, the brand, the retail store, or the shopping center in terms of whether they are up there and they clear that first hurdle of going for a CV audit, because CV audit is a very extensive audit uh, uh, which uh, covers these parameters like regulatory compliances is, is very, very critical. These are the three, the three basic pillars of uh, RF trusted mark is regulatory compliances, customer care and practices and systems. So in regulatory compliances, we cover mandatory essential compliances, whether you are regional specific, uh, national specific, product service specification compliances, uh, your other locations compliances. In customer care, we see uh, the customer service, the feedback and dispute resolution. It is very, very important today. If you go to a place and you know you have a customer grievance, how do you address it? How do you go back to consumer? How do you resolve it? So that's the major issue in in in, in the retail and you know, shopping center environment today. Because centers uh, service and feedback management systems. What kind of system they have to get feedback from consumers? How do they manage it? How do they uh, address the data of consumers in terms of safety and privacy? You know, I mean, we all know that we go to retail stores and these days everything is through a mobile number, billing, invoicing, everything comes through that. So what kind of care and what kind of systems do this retail store follow when it comes to customer data safety? And the practices and system, which is the third pillar, uh, the checks that comes under certification process is your sustainability standards, your HR practices, communications, goods and services, Terms and condition for sale for retailers and terms and conditions for hosting, which is for shopping centers. Transactions and accounting. Do you follow all adequate standards, principles for transactions and accounting? And your IT ecosystems and your IT and digital information. So these are the some of the uh, three pillars and the basic fundamental of uh, uh, IRF Trusted Mark Scheme. So where we stand today, uh, you know, we started this four or five years back, but we all know that retail and 
uh, shopping centers went through almost uh, no business for almost a year and a half, two years during pandemic. And uh, we have, uh, uh, I'll just take you through this. Okay. So this, this uh, logo that you see, the certification logo that you see, these we have uh, in certification, we have 10 certification for retail and one certification for shopping centers. In retail, we have certification for shop, e-shop, restaurant, trusted jewelers, jewelry shop, pharmacy, salon, spa, care, cineplex, fun zone. There are 10 categories in retail and one category is for shopping center. Okay, so there might be, there can be, uh, there will be a situation where even within the shopping center, the retailer is also certified and the shopping center as well is also a trusted mark certified. So, so far we are working with uh, close to 30 brands uh, in the country, uh, which ranges from shopping centers uh, spread across all zones of the country. Uh, one of our biggest uh, client in IRF Trust and Mark certification is Apollo Tires. Their uh, consumer vehicle service stations is IRF Trust and Mark certified. Uh, Arambag is a supermarket in East. Acropolis is a mall in East. Then Elante uh, is a part of Nexus Group Malls, which is one of the largest mall in the country today. They have also acquired Forum Malls, uh, which has major presence in South. Junction in East, we have Nashik uh, Mall in Nasik. Uh, so majorly it is mall because what happened was uh, post pandemic, uh, it was uh, important for the malls to uh, you know, set their standards in place predominantly because of uh, services. And also because of the COVID protocols was also a part of the certification process, which was introduced during the COVID period. We have supermarkets in the form of Qmart, Datnadi, you know, Bmart, and some of the malls and retail stores, which are under certifications uh, being listed here. So we have, uh, what are we there for is very, very important. We call ourselves consumer-centric certified. So you, you are a consumer-centric organization. You follow adequate systems and practices, fall under the CB audit, clear the CB audit, and you, uh, you know, get yourself certified for IRF Trusted Mark certification. Now, what is, 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 is happening today is IRF Trusted Mark, with my experience of being here for uh, two quarters now, I have seen that people look for tangible benefit out of this trusted mark scheme, okay? Now people say, if, if, if I have a trusted mark scheme, how does it make a difference to my business when it comes to transactional benefits? Now, we, we have to, uh, you know, in fact, I sat with many retailers and, and shopping centers and then said, this transactional benefits will be an outcome of your setting of standards and process and, you know, practices in place. So it is more to set up your systems in place to ensure that the stakeholders of the organization are confident they are running the business with the minimum risk, okay? And even if there's a risk, they're aware of it and on a regular basis. So this uh, scheme is primarily to set the standards, is to ensure that their practices and systems are in place, their consumer-centric approach is in place. They have got all the uh, systems and products and uh, you know communications related to consumer in place. And once that is in place, it is, it is definitely uh, a result in uh, better customer experience. And the better customer experience will definitely result in more visits or more loyalty towards those consumers. And it will, be, it will eventually benefit in the sales also. But sales is not a direct outcome of this trusted mask scheme. So we have, uh, you know, we, uh, we have addressed this, this, ish, uh, this query from uh, our customers who are at trusted mark certified. We have been active uh, in our social media. We have uh, various communications that we have lately started. We are launching our newsletter very soon. We'll also be uh, uh, launching a various uh, brochures and other activities. We are also participating in various consumer-centric forums, uh, conferences. Uh, we're trying to address the community of this retail fraternity and the shopping center fraternity that this is the next things to be like. And it 
it it's basically works in three parameters uh, works well for uh, others in, in in three parameters one is it is done by a certification body which carries a lot of value it is not a private run or it's not a private audit uh, you know so it's 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 a done by a certification third party certification body so it becomes comes with a lot of credibility the certification bodies are governed by nvcb they know that they have to follow the certain and they also go through certain uh, audits by nvcb whether they are following certain practices and system based on what was approved so there are checks on them as well so it's approved and done by a uh, certified uh, certification bodies so that's one uh, where rest of the certifications are primarily a private certification two it saves a lot of time for the retailer and the uh, shopping centers so the mechanism that we follow in terms of audits is is something that uh, our cb bodies do, uh, do this in in a very quick time uh, for uh, a quick time and uh, once the certificates are issued as i said uh, you know it's it's instead of hiring various different uh, uh, organizations to conduct this various other audits because with my experience in malls i have seen for hr you have somebody else who will do an audit for finance you have somebody else who will do an audit uh, from customer centricity so there are multiple five six audits that you do to derive to this objective of what pyrep trusted my actually achieves so you go to one single body and you get this done this is the second uh, uh, you know the advantage of doing the this audit and, uh, and the third and the most important uh, aspects of uh, this audit is its cost saving as well so if you actually do this uh, audits from various parties you know and you club them together the expenses is very very high and the expenses here is is quite controlled and when this uh, scheme was uh, developed there was a technical committee there was an advisory committee from the field of uh, retail and shopping malls they all came together they are the ones who agreed and formulated on the kind of checks the kind of audit process should follow and they are the ones who also agreed to a general commercial uh, you know the fee for this trusted mark so they it, it's in consensus with everybody and that's the reason why it becomes very very important and uh, uh, you know uh, relevant to today's time and i you know you know i i want to quote here as you know one of a very senior person in the industry has quoted once that you know like india is 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 uh, a hub for you know medical facilities and it's 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 a, it's 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 a you know it's a place where the world looks after same is the rf trusted mark rf trusted mark is a scheme which will change the complete customer centric uh, approach and standards in retail and shopping malls so we we uh, you know uh, we have initiated this uh, couple of webinars uh, we've speaking to few other uh, counterparts and you know uh, sorry when i say uh, other bodies uh, retail bodies you know the other shopping center bodies and we are encouraging them to uh, move ahead with direct trusted mark certifications things had been uh, picking up now because post pandemic things have come back to business have come back to normal so things are picking up now but we definitely require a lot more support uh, in terms of uh, representing direct trusted mark as a trusted body uh, in in retail and shopping malls and that was the reason why we you know uh, fortunate to have this this discussions today and uh, i look forward to you know uh, further queries uh, if you have and uh, if you have any other understanding that you want uh, to you know more than happy to address that so thank you so much ma'am and thank you so much everybody for giving me this opportunity to speak yeah thank you thank you mr pandey for that uh, crisp uh, presentation uh, we will ask uh, the audience also to ask a few questions couple of questions uh, I mean, I just wanted to ask uh, from my side. So, uh, the certification uh, that you are offering is uh, for management systems. It's not a product certification, right? When you yes, say a yes. trusted mark, it's it's an organizational uh, management systems. Yes. It's for the entire business. Yes. Right. And uh, does your audit methodology include the mystery audits, which uh, you were touching upon somewhere? mystery audit if you actually ask me is not the fundamentals of rf trusted mark scheme okay. mystery audit is actually a screening mechanism okay uh. so what happens is uh, there there may be a retailer who is following certain standards and practices which is in line with rf trusted mark scheme 
but there are other organizations which want to be trusted mark certified but they're not very sure about the kind of practice and system they follow mm -hmm. so what mystery does is it's 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 not a fundamental requirement for have trusted mark but we do this more like a screening for them to be to tell them that this is what they where they stand at this moment and before the trusted mark main cb audit happens they are supposed to take care of this xyz right right okay thank you we do have uh, mr indranil ghosh uh, sir you wanted to ask something uh, good evening i am i am from mumbai so naturally my questions will be uh, regarding mumbai only see do in mumbai do you have any class? see i will ask uh, three small questions and sir yeah. also will be very small I hope yeah. so. I am from Mumbai. So, do you have any client in Mumbai, or all of your clients are Chennai or Kerala based? No, in the Nilji, we have uh, shopping centers in uh, Mumbai who are RF Trusted Mark certified. So, you have uh, Phoenix Mall Palladium, which is RF Trusted Mark. Yes, and then we have Phoenix Mall Kurla, which is RF Trusted Mark certified. Seawood Grand Central, the Nexus Mall in uh, Navi Mumbai. Is uh, also Grand Central RF, is also right. Yeah, yes, very good. it is also direct tested. Very good, sir. Thank you very much. Our my second question is: as it is a management system, um, system you are following, do you mm -hmm. follow the high level structure? The standard particular standard follow the high level structure. So can we can it be clubbed with ISO 9001, 14001, etc.? I am I I I would I don't think that can be clubbed. Uh, okay. with those standards. It follows a separate standard of ISO IC 17065. So it is not following that high level structure, right? The, when you say high level structure, can you just define that a little bit? Yeah, 9001, 14001. Yeah, can, can, can I answer that for yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it. No, I think first thing is that this is not a management system standard. It's uh, it's a, uh, you would, I would say, a process standard because it is covered under 17065, which is product, process, and service. Okay. It's not covered under 1721, which is for management system certification. Okay. Mm. Right. Okay. And so therefore, since it is not a management systems uh, mm. uh, standard, therefore it doesn't follow HLS. Okay. okay. Fine. Now, uh, uh, my last question is, uh, now how a one person can become an auditor for this uh, certification system? So this has to be, if I'm not wrong, uh, the organization has to be first uh, you know, apply to NABCB for being a certification body for the scheme. Okay. Oh, he is asking about. Uh, I think that this uh, that sorry. is what he is saying is for certification for a certification body. The question probably relates to how an individual can become an auditor. Yes, 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 yes. 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 So, that is what Sir was asking. I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as an individual, uh, see, he has already said there are three certification bodies which are there which are approved. Mm. So, so I would, only two names have been given. One is TVU, TUV, Nord, and other one is uh, three, three. Uh, Quality Austria, TUV, and BVCI. Bureau yeah, Veritas. Right. Bureau Veritas. So right. three, three names have been given. So my, I would imagine that you need to go to these three, one okay. of these three bodies. But uh, among documents now, see, I was involved when it was scheme was started way back. Mm -hmm. Now I'm out of out of date with the scheme, so I can't claim to know the latest documents. Mm -hmm. But if there is, I, I can see there's a document called Trust 203, uh, which talks about audit auditor competence or something. So I think there will be, usually in a scheme, the auditor competence would be laid down centrally by the scheme owner and not left to the certification bodies to decide. So there okay. ought to be, there would be a document and I can see, as I said, Trust 203, there seems to be a document. So go through that document and see what are the competences prescribed okay. for the auditors. And if you meet those competences, then check with these three certification bodies if they can empanel you as an auditor. Okay, fine, fine. Thank you very much. I uh, I just wanted to touch upon that. Um, you have already addressed it in your uh, session. Even I have also made a note of it. There's a lot of intangibility in the whole exercise of uh, building the trust in a business. So you did uh, mention that, you know, business were asking for uh, tangible uh, benefits out of it. But trust building uh, is actually a lot of intangibilities associated with it. And uh, mm, this is something which I wanted to ask you myself, but then you have already addressed it. And uh, certain things um, cannot be measured, uh, maybe in a black and white. Uh, but um, as I said, uh, trust deficit is, is a huge problem in the marketplace and the industry. 
and also Why ramaji just... what has happened is uh, yeah. ramaji what has happened is uh, we have to run this uh, trusted mark scheme association for at least a considerable time to be able to right. you know find the delta change you know in terms of how much difference has it made unfortunately when it was launched and you know after a few uh, you know i mean when it was about to pick up the covid came in so right. we have to run it for the organization has to be associated at least for few years to be able to understand the post and pre uh, the differences in terms of uh, you know in terms of how it has benefited intangibly but the prime focus is is to get your you know basic fundamentals and the systems and practices in place i just wondered why is it uh, named as uh, trusted uh, mark actually I just through the standard uh, through this process because i'm just trying to understand is it a more of an assurance uh, that is being uh, given through this i'm just trying to yes. see that okay yes yes it's more of an assurance and uh, see one of your out of this 10 uh, segments um, that you were uh, highlighting i saw one on jewelers jewelry sector ha uh, uh. uh this is something again which i was thinking uh, see the jewel uh, the retailers there is a parallel program which is happening in the country is for uh, uh, called hallmarking mm, of hallmarking. The, uh, jewelry okay that's again actually mm. for a product and uh, that is also kind of a uh, a trusted uh, program only uh, only thing is that it comes under some mandatory um, as a mandatory mandatory requirement uh, for the jewelers business so Uh, that is more to do with the product, of course. But then again, the hallmarking uh, scheme is also for the retail uh, jewelers and the industry also. Uh, just trying to understand. I'm just trying to look at uh, um, opportunities and uh, potential in this because uh, this is uh, this is also targeted at the uh, jeweler segment. Of course, uh, different players are in it. Of course, uh, have you uh, offered this to any jewelers earlier? Not yet. Yeah. we are talking to few we are talking right. to few but we have not been able to convert uh, any jeweler on trusted scheme as this moment right yeah. because they 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 are using uh, hallmarking as actually a, a trusted uh, uh, mark and uh, that's something and mm. uh, the spas and uh, the salons uh, that you have mentioned you know that is actually a potential area because the government of india is promoting uh, uh like it's whether it's medical value travel or wellness this comes into wellness tourism actually and adventure tourism and all this uh, um, there are multiple tourism initiatives that are happening by uh, government of india especially uh, the service export promotion council so i think uh, it's very focused engagement on the um, spas and salons uh, there is uh, there's something that can be done because mm. country is going to attract a lot of traffic uh, terms of international tourists visiting for tourism wellness lot of wellness and uh, something like that even aish is also a wellness uh, program and initiative mm -hmm. uh that is where actually the schemes have to be positioned very strongly that's what i feel sir mr mr gosh wanted to ask again yes sir uh, <laughs> no i am very sorry that i am asking Nein. you again and time and again no see no, uh, this i was try i was searching in internet was the meaning of mystery audit i could not find it so that is why my query is maybe right. maybe a very small question but i think <laughs> you yeah you indril ji indril ji mystery ha huh, mystery audit is uh, an audit done by you know it's the way the name says it's it's an audit done by an auditor where the consumer the customer won't know uh, uh, when is the audit being done so he goes there as a consumer as a customers and he carries those parameters that he needs to check <laughs> and then he the experience that he gets as a consumer he uh, uh, does that as a as a mystery auditor and uh, that's how so basically a shopping it. experience right yes as as somebody which is not announced okay fine sir thank you very much sir yeah yeah uh we actually would like to request uh, mr pandey uh, request you to is it possible and feasible for you to organize at least for about a two days uh, session uh, with uh, any of the cb structured or anybody to train the consultants create an awareness program for us or a two days uh, internal audit just pro program whatever it is okay yes yes uh, that is where actually we will get uh, deeper insights into the standard and retail businesses are extremely interested and in, generally by and large okay mm -hmm. uh, in uh, this kind of programs and retail businesses are extremely customer focused and customer centric uh businesses and we need to understand a little more uh yeah we, yeah correct 
Yes, correct. So yeah, we 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 do that as a part of our program. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so we uh, yeah. So you know we also have Digvijay here from uh, the quality uh, Asia Central Asia team. Okay. okay. So okay. I just you know I have also uh, you know requested him to be a part of this. So they are the ones who are on the floor and dealing with this uh, standards. Digvijay, okay. would you like to you know I mean for, for whatever uh, questions being asked mm -hmm. and uh, what Rama Ma'am and Ali Ji has said in terms of you have something to just highlight on that kind of briefly. Sure, sir. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, as you said that uh, you need uh, two, three days or one or two days of training uh, on this IRS scheme. Yes. So definitely we can arrange that and uh, we have done this earlier also. Right. So basically, it's a two days uh, session where uh, a whole day session where uh, our yes. trainer will, el will elaborate a lot and there will be an evaluation session also where you will be trained uh, and uh, the scheme will be, uh, you will understand it more in depth of this scheme it yes. can be done that is what because that will immensely benefit all of us and uh, um, that would be a nice value proposition because uh, um, at the end of the day we have uh, the last mile connectivity with the industry and uh, so we can also um, when properly trained uh, armed with uh, the right information we can also try to trigger the interest of uh, the market and the industry. And um, just as we are discussing, uh, um, we also see whether we can open up uh, a few sessions with uh, jewelers uh, platforms and uh, even in South, um, CCC uh, is uh, based out of Chennai. It doesn't mean that most of the consultants today who are here today, they're all from Pan India. And uh, Maybe I could see that Ratnadeep supermarket is from Hyderabad, right? That's the, that's yes, the only brand yes, that I could, yeah, that, that's Q a common. Yes. Qmart is also from Hyderabad. Oh, yeah. Qmart. Because Ratnadeep, mm. I know, that's uh, that's a prominent wow. one, one of the oldest uh, ones in Hyderabad. Uh, right. So we will uh, also just try to trigger the interest in these markets in southern regions and wellness and spas and some of this dedicated uh, engagements. Uh, let me also check with the um, uh, Service Expert Promotion Council. Just let's explore because they are very strong into hospitality and uh, uh, the tourism sector see that you know whether uh, uh, some um, a teaser session for the industry could be done and even otherwise there are chambers of commerce there are many chambers see what is needed is industry needs to know about it okay because uh, looking at the retail sector not many standards are of course uh, are there, but by and large if you see the, the best standard is always 9001 ISO 9001 and uh, there is a certain uh, uniqueness in this uh, scheme uh, that needs to be taken to the market and positioned. And uh, there is an attraction, uh, 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 the way in which it is branded or uh, kind of, you know, um, the, the tag name itself carries a lot of uh, uh, weightage. Uh, industry needs to know. Otherwise, um, not very any specific standards. Um, when you said e-shops, are you meaning e-commerce? Mr. Pandey, it is applicable even for shops and e-shop size. So oh? e-shop means... Uh, okay, so uh, e-shop, yeah. So e-shop, uh, we uh, fundamentally say that if uh, you have any distribution uh, center or you have any warehousing from you directly through, you deliver to consumer, uh -huh. those places can also have certification. So like, when so you say e-shop, it is not online. Right. It is not online. Uh, is that not is online. what I wanted to because I understood interpreting. But I'll tell you e what comes in eShop is uh. also if you if you know uh, if you if you are aware of Swiggy uh. Uh, or Zomato, they also yes. have a cloud kitchen. You know. Yes. yes. They also have a cloud kitchen. So uh, you need to have a physical shop, but you you know uh, online you deliver it to consumers right. directly. You don't have a retail shop where people can buy at the counter. Mm -hmm. But you need to have a production unit which can be audited based on which eShop certificates can be issued. Digvijay, can you clarify a little bit more on yeah, this? Yeah, can you please I'm... come again? It is not clear. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, sir. You rightly said that it's not kind of mm -hmm. an e-commerce. It's basically a warehouse type from where, uh, you know, the product can be directly delivered to the customer. And uh, the example which you gave of the Swiggy and Zomato, we can take this example that, uh, you know, we order from here from through our mobile. And the product is and the food is delivered from to your uh, at your uh, door 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 uh, doorstep. Okay, so that is basically a, your e shop. Okay, right. So it's typically in an online um, 
business, right? You can say, you can, uh, just to elaborate it, you can take the example of farm easy. Right. You can, uh, That's we, exactly. order, we order the medicines uh, yes. today. Uh, we just uh, on the application, we type, we mm. upload our uh, description and within our, our the medicines that are delivered at your Right. Order. And same model. That is what, see, this is what, this is exactly what you actually uh, write your uh, analogy you drew. So uh, where there is a physical form, format as well as an online presence, same with the mm -hmm. retail pharmacies. For example, I was about to ask, is there a program for uh, retail pharmacies? Because in that 10 uh, segments. Yeah, uh, pharmacies are also there. There is, a, yeah, there is a pharmacy, yes. Oh, yes. There is a pharmacy, oh, retail pharmacies, yeah, right. Yeah. This is all I wanted to know because. Yeah. No, in fact, uh, Rama ma'am, I was trying to tell you that almost every sector is covered in this retail certification. So, okay. and the second thing is uh, when we talk about RF trusted mark, it is not always about the national chains or chain of stores right, or, you I know, understand. who has the even one single store, if yes. he's, he, he wants to go for RF trusted mark certification, he can go for that certification process. And what is happening today is we are getting more inquiry from the regional brands. Okay, so, so 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 we are getting regional salons who are approaching us for RF trusted mark, regional supermarkets are approaching us. And in some categories, we have still not been able to uh, get uh, the first brand on board. However, the potential that we see in terms of customer centric and hospitality is huge. Like if this is for hospitality and customer centric, then the restaurants are the first person who should be actually coming on board and saying, we want to be RF trusted mark certified, you know, because of the health, hygiene, everything that is covered in this trusted scheme. So if uh, the regional players can, uh, the regional brands, the retailers and shopping centers can play a major role uh, in getting associated with the RF trusted mark. However, when we say, when we talk to the national brands or an MNC brands, they always come back to, to us and saying that, because we have certain systems in place which is governed by international yes. bodies. So we know how what we are doing. So convincing them will take time. But the regional brands who you know want to set up the systems and practices and get a IRF trusted mark certified, mm -hmm. certified, the inclination for them to be towards us is very, very high at this moment. And you know, that's the place where you know we see a gap and we need to you know address them. So, you know, right now, whatever enrollment we are getting at all regional brands. Now, is it this diagnostic centers are covered under this or the pathology labs? Technically, uh, they don't come care, under that's it's uh, a healthcare. No, we can't a, say no, they are. Uh, I don't think so, ma'am. Uh, that yes. uh, your uh, uh, this uh, your hospitals and all that must be their pathology labs and, mm -hmm. uh, and that things are not covered in science. Right, Dik that's Bajai, what I Bajai, what about care? Trusted mark care. Care, tr tr trusted care. Yes. Okay, one second. Yeah, can we see that? Because technically the pathology labs also, um, I have the same retail focus. They're not retail businesses, but but for the other thing, whatever is being done, it's all the same. Your yeah, so there pharmacy, is a your pharmacy. Yeah. Yeah, sorry? Mm. Pharmacy is covered, man. Uh, uh, pharmacy is covered, right? But yeah. other right. In trusted care, if I'm not wrong, Vijay will just see the documents, but this in trusted care, yeah, in trusted care, we can cover this uh, uh, pathological layer labs and. And uh, see, you look at about. all this um, of the uh, optical stores, mm. right? So they're all basically your mm. uh, retail businesses chain of. Uh, you that is where you have small uh, local chains, regional chains, uh, optical outlets. Yeah, they will fall under shop, ma'am. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, they'll fall under shop. Oh, they fall so under it, shop. Maybe shop, that yes. uh, that segment, I mean, more detailed uh, uh, segmentation will help us actually. Anyhow, that's just to, trying to understand by and large it. Uh, but hotels so for are not retail, covered, right? even, For retail, when you are doing fashion or you are selling accessories or uh, specs uh, or okay. uh, they all fall under shop. So what shop. doesn't fall under shop, we have created other categories. So this so trusted care falls under this your uh, gyms, okay? Your uh -huh. uh, gyms. Uh, your okay. gym health centers, basically. Right. Okay. Gyms and health centers. That's health all wellness centers. centers. Basically, wellness they're centers. wellness centers. Wellness centers. Yes, gyms and yeah. spas come under wellness centers. Okay, right. And hotels are not covered. Restaurants are covered, but not hotels, right? Not hotels, no. right? No, not uh, hotels. Uh, we, there is a separate scheme for, for hotels and all that. Right. Uh, separate scheme. Fine. Anybody else? Uh, maybe the floor is open for questions. Sir, this is Ram Kumar. Sir, uh, like Madam asked about the optical laboratories, where the opticians are, you, uh, it was said that it comes under the shop category. 
see nowadays i am seeing lot of dental clinics are also many bds people now after completing their degree or mds they they open a shop literally it is a shop only which shop come clinic you go and uh, say, uh, who are very conscious about their uh, uh, maintenance of the teeth particularly in the, nowadays a lot of consciousness is there but among youngsters also they go and do lot of uh, uh, cosmetic uh, related uh, small small surgeries or small small things are also being done is it uh, applicable to all the dental uh, clinics or the dental laboratories the no that's what the healthcare side that comes a technical and uh, the retail format of healthcare no sir the clinics basically are the retail format in healthcare but they don't uh, have coverage of healthcare maybe you can answer that uh, mr vidik vijay uh ma'am that uh, your this optical shops and clinics uh, that i believe are right. not important by higher risk that's fine mm. right okay somebody mr uh, would it be possible for a brief write up on trustmark uh, program on how an assessor can participate and contact information atul ji you are here right Yes, he said. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> please, please shoot fire. <laughs> I saw uh, this is basically just only to uh, get the information about how you know we could uh, uh, get ourselves uh, in terms of how we could actively participate, and not only just promotion, but also actively in terms of implementation of uh, such trust mark yes. uh, across the board, so that we could also contribute to our to the scheme. So just a brief or some. I mean, I could guide, guide some guidance from your end how we could start or approach on this. That's why we've requested for the two days training, no, Atul ji. Two days, yeah. two full yeah. days of training for all of us. Right. So, but uh, prior yeah. to that training, I would looking at right. you know, if right. it could be some where right. you could actually read through and go through it, understand it more, little more detail. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Uh, we can ask. Actually, he was presenting it originally. Um, right. We can request them. We can request them. See uh, the entire documents of the IRF are available at the IRF website. Website. Okay. You can uh, go at the website and uh, search these documents. Uh, you have okay. to just uh, enter your credentials. Okay. Right. Uh, and then you will get the documents. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks. So if you the what we have done uh -huh. is we have we have made those uh, documents accessible to everybody and we have not restricted there at this moment. So if you go to the document section on IRF Trusted Mark website. you will get all the documents related to audits who can participate what kind of schemes we have what kind of uh, you know uh, systems and practices we checks under each of the schemes which schemes are for which particular brand everything is uh, available and if you need still need any specific input you know you can write to us directly my email address is available to rama ma'am you can write and my number is also available to her you can write to us directly we will try to we will try to address uh, those specific questions for you technical non technical and but uh, yes as 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 rightly said we will be more than keen to have this two days of uh, uh, training session uh, uh, for uh, everybody that is keen and interested to take it forward with us uh, yes. we can do this in chennai you know me i can travel i can also get uh, uh, dig vijay and his team or few other cb bodies to come with me and we can do a very thorough discussion on all the technical understanding the process how much time does it take how does the process starts what is the enrollment all that we can you know talk about in this two day session and we'll complete uh, run through of the scheme we can Great. do it we can do a virtual one so that uh, i would prefer we can uh, do virtual as well virtual yes. also because uh, across mg pan india everybody can join yes we can do a, yeah we can do that so i mean i'm i'm okay earliest i mean it's just the next week that we are little tied up with queuing right. around but after that in any time in september we can that, uh, do that well in advance we can do a structure digvijay we can do a complete structure of how we want to phase it out in session wise what we are going to address in each of the session and uh, the third the fourth session on the second day uh, yeah. we can keep it for a general uh, one to one uh, question answer session Okay. Uh, I am. And we can ask. Yes. I have a question from me. Yes. I am Isaki Mutu. Is there any accreditation forum for this IRF? Anil ji, what do you like mean by some... accreditation forum uh, for IRF? Like for uh, our ISO systems, you know, we are having 
IIF like that for this uh, IRF is there any accreditation forum uh, okay you, you you need to understand the structure IIF uh, is a forum for all accreditation bodies which certi which accredit certification bodies whether they are for ISO standards or otherwise so yes. for ISO 17065 oh. where normally there are less international standards ISO 1721 rides on international standards like 9001 or 14001 or yes. 22000 etc yes. but 17065 operates less on international standards more on local uh, national standards and private standards and schemes so uh, for 17065 uh, certification bodies accreditation also is covered under IAF now IAF has a system whereby it also endorses certification schemes but that's a step which you take only when your scheme is international uh, for example when i was doing yoga certification scheme which which is international actually my goal was that we should go to iaf and get it endorsed because that is international okay. otherwise why would i go to iaf to get it endorsed if it's not international so iaf does have a provision for endorsing certification schemes IAF has also laid down some rules now for certification schemes to follow if they are to be accredited by accreditation bodies. So when NABCB accredits IRF scheme, okay. today it would be required to first evaluate the scheme and see whether the scheme is based on certain sound principles or not. And those principles have been laid down in a document called IAF Mandatory Document 25, IAF MD 25. It has been published in January of 2022. I was the co-chair of the task force which developed the document. Okay. And it is applicable from January 2024. Two years transition time has been given. So in fact, IRF should have, I don't know now that we are talking on this, IRF should have received a communication from NBCB as a scheme owner or the certification bodies who are accredited, like three certification bodies, that you need to align your scheme with IAF MD25 for us to continue to provide accreditation services all scheme owners so in a way what would happen is in future every scheme that <clears throat> looks for accreditation through an iaf member body like nabcb would have to get its scheme evaluated by the accreditation body and therefore there would be some kind of endorsement by the accreditation body of the scheme although it is not intended to be endorsement the the, the requirement laid down in the international standard is that the accreditation body shall determine the suitability of the scheme for the purposes of accreditation. Because when I accredit as for a scheme, a certification body for IRF, in, in indirectly I am also endorsing IRF scheme because I am providing accreditation, I am lending my name to it. So a requirement was put in the standard 17,011 that the accreditation body shall have policy and procedures in place to determine the suitability of a conformity assessment scheme for the purposes of accreditation. Okay. So there is a system ecosystem now developing. So uh, IRF scheme would indirectly get endorsement from NABCB when NABCB provides accreditation. And NABCB provides accreditation as per 17065 and would also follow IFMD 25 to evaluate the scheme. That's it, that, that's the connect with IAF. But if okay. you want your scheme to be endorsed by IAF, you can always apply to IAF and get endorsed. Okay. So, for example, Global Gap, if you have heard of uh, Global Gap, good agile practices, that is IAF endorsed. Or if you have heard for FAMI QS, which is for feeds, okay. uh, it is uh, endorsed by IAF. So, there are some schemes, FSSC 22000, which are endorsed by IAF. So, they, you, you apply to IAF and get endorsed, which means all member bodies can provide accreditation and it will be covered under evaluation of IAF. Thank you, sir. Good. Uh, Any other question? Santosh, I can I can see on the website the documents are not freely available. They have, you have to write a mail and then they will be made available. But a certain amount of basic, I mean, I can see sometimes scheme owners do not want to share all the documents absolutely publicly. But a certain amount of um, uh, description of the scheme is necessary on the website for people to get an idea what is the scheme about. We'll do that. Yeah, I think I understand. Huh? Correct. Now, what happened was we had an issue. Uh, yeah, we had an issue with uh, somebody accessing the documents and we uh, fell into uh, some kind of an, uh, uh, you know, uh, inconvenience. So I think the team has done that. But yeah, I agree. 
we'll make a certain amount of documents uh, for people yeah, because to for example yes, as as a as a retailer i want to go there at least i have to know what is the basis of the yes. if you don't give me the exact standard at least tell me what yeah. is the basis of your certification what yeah. is the process so certain documents need to be on site or at sure. least a description of the scheme in fact 17065 i think somewhere says hmm. that at least a description of the scheme even md25 says we recognize that uh, scheme owners may not always uh, put all their documents on the website for the fear yeah. of being coached and you know copied etc yeah. so uh, it does say uh, please download if md25 from if uh, website and it does say that a description of the scheme shall be publicly available so please do that at least okay yes so i can't see any of the documents sure. on the website no? yeah 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 point taken any joint programs you have done with uh, rai collab in collaboration with uh, uh, rai retailers association of india Ma'am, uh, we 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 have uh, we tried doing that, but I think they are working on a different mindset, so they are okay. not. Okay, <laughs> right. No, no, that's I know that's precisely why I was. Some of these platforms have grown very big, and they are very big, of course. But there will be some um, local uh, um, ones, and uh, by and large, you find a lot of um, uh, shops and traders and chambers of commerce. Most of the members of the chambers of commerce are all. Uh, retail businesses. Uh, yeah, see, we reaching this. Yeah, we reaching this retailers in our way, anyways. Uh, right. Ma'am, and right. it doesn't like Rai doesn't say that you are not supposed to be a part of it, but it, they are not very happy endorsing this uh, for us uh, or you know uh, promoting right. this for us. Hmm. I think they have their own set of uh, things, but you know, I'm that's for sure that they're not they're not discouraging anybody to be a part right. of this. But if they would have probably been with us, things would have been a little more easier. But uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, I tried sometimes, speaking to them a few times. Yeah. Sometimes, um, actually, yeah, yeah, associations don't endorse, and sometimes it's it's better to oh, have it that way. Uh, allow the open mm -hmm. market to come and embrace it, and not to be driven mm -hmm. by uh, yes uh, associations. In a way, it has its own strengths and weaknesses also. Uh, right. So maybe let's try to first maybe once we all get trained and have a. Uh, a fair understanding of that knowledge sessions have to continue uh, both for consultants and industry on a regular basis you know um, yes and then uh, at least basically message has to reach uh, yeah. throughout the country let's see what best we can do yeah. any other questions from anybody parag ji any questions yeah mrs rama this is bb gupta yes, my mr. question gupta. is to mr pandey Yes, Mr. Please. Pandey, where is the pull for the certification of IRS? Or we are trying to force ourselves on the retail chains. Okay, so uh, as I said, it's it's a voluntarily certification, the volunteer certification. It's it's not something that you can push it across to retailers or shopping malls. It is not a statutory requirement for them, anyways. So what happens is, if any retailer wants to uh, put their practices and systems in place. Uh, to ensure best of best customer centricity to uh, their consumers, we brief them about the scheme. We tell them the benefits of the scheme. We tell them what are the areas they uh, take care of within the scheme. But it is for them to enroll. It's only when you know. I mean, it's not a mandatory or statutory scheme that you know we can enforce it to them. You see, in fact, my colleague Jory is already there. He has spoken. As soon as you try to go to NABCB, they'll try to enforce. Through the government regulations, they try to make it compulsory. And my gut feeling after so many 51 years of my engineering career is as soon as you try to enforce and make anything compulsory, you mess it up with all kinds of uh, backlash, with all kinds of uh, first bring out a scheme where there is a pull from the customers. I can share with you my experience of last 25 years. I qualified as an aerospace auditor. There is a pull from aerospace. Buyers, Boeing and Airbus, they pull it. And I am an IATF assessor, which is automotive. There is a huge pull from the automotive manufacturers. Those who manufacture vehicles, BMW, Mercedes, the standards are framed by them and uh, they pull it. So until or unless there is a pull from the customers, like I'm a buyer from the retail chains, first bring out a pull from the buyers that yes, there is a need for certification. You are doing a good cause. My only appeal is don't force it on the retail chains and anybody until or unless there is a clear pull from the buyers. Otherwise, it becomes just a 
kind of a, a, a people make it as a business they start printing these certificates and start distributing these certificates yes sir we we follow them the, which has happened in many of the schemes unfortunately yes mr gupta we following the same thing there is no there is no push to this this is more like making them understand what is the scheme can make a difference to them we are not come making it compulsory for anybody we have uh, as 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 a group we are also a company which is the largest catalyst in retail and shopping centers as you know this company uh, the sister concern of this company we are the sister concern of the company called images group we are there for 35 years we know all the retailers in the country today all the shopping malls and then we trade with them in various uh, aspects but we haven't ever come across a situation or we want to get into a situation where we say you do this or not this or not that so no we don't know this is more uh, more if only if they want to do it and they understand the reason behind doing it is only it is possible we if you don't follow any of this methods we completely go by what you are saying and that's the process we follow so that was only my appeal we do a lot of certifications on behalf of uh, pepsi on behalf of co but those the bars they have their bottling plants and they enforce it as a buyer as a brand image holder for pepsi as well as co my only appeal is bring that kind of a scheme where there is a pressure from those kind of organizations who are the buyers that's only what i want to convey yes sir good insights thank you gupta ji thanks for joining us today thank you uh, sorry just um, uh, mr bonte yes Uh, one more clarification, like uh, IRCA for management system auditors, is there any organization for these IR of auditors, Mr. No, Pandey? I don't think there is any any organization for any of the product certification audits. Really, uh, there is only a system for management systems auditors. I have not seen a system for unless the scheme or himself runs a system for certifying auditors. There is no no such system. thank you sir gupta ji going back to your uh, question uh, your questions and insights um, very valid but again um, as long as something is voluntary something is not pushed down the throat of the industry um, these are the schemes which will uh, stay in the market for a longer time what i was also mentioning is the retail sector by and large you see any retail business except the dice for 9001 there's nothing in the market there's no specific uh, program or uh, a scheme or a product for them to most of this um, 9001 certificates we all know as consultants you know they are not authentic literally they are all sold in the marketplace and uh, uh, so businesses need retail businesses need uh, some good uh, uh, systems and standards and let them let them come forward and take it uh, voluntarily um, some kind of a um, Uh, ongoing engagement in the form of knowledge sharing has to continue otherwise uh, it's just a free sale of certificates in the market we all know it just walk into any retailer shop you'll find an iso 9001 certificate i'm um, for it uh, rama ji in fact uh, but the only appeal was only don't enforce yes. it yes yes the yes. legislation make it uh, voluntary no, no, yes. people adopt it by head, head and heart even the ones which are um, done by legislation and all that that they are also uh, you know at the end of the day mandatory legislation anything passed through a statutory mandatory requirement also they are unable to make an impact at the marketplace mm, these are all should be with systems quality standards products schemes like this should be left uh, voluntary anyway this is a pri private scheme so there is no question of ever it being becoming Absolutely. a public anyway Yeah. So yes. we shouldn't even be discussing this issue. The, mm, the, right. the other issue is more relevant. What is the pull? The first question Mr. Gupta asked is more relevant. Why should the retailers go for it? That pull has to be created by the scheme owner, and for that uh, it has to have strategies in place. How it encourages people to come forward, whether it's by consumer education, where consumers prefer to go to that kind of store, or um, right. you know uh, engaging with even. services export promotion council that they can when they publicize abroad they they're trying to bring foreign yes. tourists into india yes that we have we have uh, like they publicized nabh accredited hospitals for medical tourism that we have systems available you can go to these are the shops which are trusted 
which can be trusted etc so that's that kind of engagement uh, that scheme owner has to in fact my own experience uh, of having created schemes is that scheme owner needs to spend far greater time at strategizing how to get it accepted in the market than on managing the scheme itself which is a much easier job you don't need too much of effort once you work uh, you designated certification bodies they will go on doing the certification you have very little to do but much of your time should be spent on strategizing how to gain acceptability how to promote the scheme so so that's something that uh, governments do actually do. <coughs> sorry if you look that, at that that may include even uh, persuading the government uh, for example yes um you know uh, making this uh, as a prerequisite for some procurement or whatever or even uh, you know uh, persuading mall owners that if they rent out shops they should rent out only to those who have that trusted mark or gain a trusted mark within a year or so things like those it's, it's governments do governments do kerala government for example uh, they have because kerala is a, a market which attracts lot of uh, tourists right um, yes. uh, for their uh, wellness uh, tourism so if you really i'll share the schemes with you very interesting which i just came to know when we did a program in kerala three, three years ago just before covid uh, with scpc for medical value travel uh, india heals uh, was initiated by government of india uh, that's when actually i did a lot of research i realized uh, they have a scheme for home stays all the home stays in kerala where uh, the international uh, tourists come and stay they all prefer in kerala people prefer staying in all this because they are more affordable and well maintained so they have multiple formats so their government has come out with a scheme that all the home stays have to have uh, go through a certification program the government has to kind of uh, um, give a stamp that you know these are safe places hygienic places clean places and things like that okay so voluntarily that that by by then they are giving an assurance to the uh, international tourists so there are um, one or two programs kerala government has done it markets like goa places where a uh, lot of tourists come safe uh, restaurants to eat to choose you know something like that safe, uh, safe uh, i mean kind of um, uh, shopping malls that they can visit where uh, that's what even everybody requires that assurance and it trust and voluntarily it will come even a fssai as a, a food regulator also can look at it they may not mandate anything but they can always uh, ask the industry to look at this voluntary scheme all your restaurants eat right eat right program no sir everybody is for example you know i'm not really surprised even hospitals are promoting eat right uh, campuses our hospital is eat right uh, campus uh, certified or uh, you know we have got a rec recognized for eat right uh, campus uh, initiative or something like that we are seeing all this it's all voluntary nobody has mandated anything there has to be some value and uh, for the uh, users and consumers also not simply giving this time to everybody eventually it takes time voluntary schemes to find the market acceptance and all that will take time but this actually the scheme has potential maybe with the uh, uh, right uh, strategies and working uh, your way through you know you have a market acceptance not instead of trying to push something down the throat of the industry we must encourage them to come forward and opt for it voluntarily so any other questions from anybody are we all uh, willing to i mean uh, uh, get ourselves uh, trained for the two days uh, program yes, maybe yes, we will yes. ask all of us uh, yes. that will, yes so that will actually uh, empower all of us to understand uh, uh, in, at a greater depth in understanding what the standard is all about so any other questions so if there are no questions um can we close the session with a small vote of thanks uh, ram kumar uh, sorry yes sir this is the ramadan the only appeal i will make it yes sir when you keep a program like you have kept it on sunday for uh, four o'clock or so it mm -hmm. is the better time See, yes. all of a um, large number of people are busy. Mm -hmm. So my request only would be keep the programs at around five o'clock. Yes. 4:30. That is better to attend them. Yes. 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 Yes.
Now that is what sir, consultant's calendar is always busy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The calendars are always busy for the consultants. We'll keep it. We don't mind. We'll request them to do even a six to eight session also, not an issue, right? We are seeing a lot of programs. Let's let's figure out a way. We are keeping it. Actually, if you see uh, Gupta ji, all the programs are always after four. Thank you. After four, uh, we will do it, and uh, it, it's it's at the end of the day, uh, knowledge uh, sharing for all of us. Ram Kumar sir is a vice president of uh, CCC. Sir is here. Sir, please uh, do the oath of thanks. Thank you, thank you, madam. So uh, I am really very happy to be. Uh, in fact, here uh, the details about uh, this particular uh, scheme, a lot of various uh, in new, minute details have been uh, shared by Mr. Santosh Kumar Pandey and uh, also Mr. Tegu Jai Singh. And uh, really, I think it, 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 it's a, it was a very useful session, sir. And it, it's a good curtain raiser. In fact, it's a, it's a, as Rama Ma'am said, I think we need to have a detailed training program. I think definitely you will be working on it. and. Uh, uh, organize some one one day full day training program or a two day training program where you no know, for consultants like us it will be very useful for us to take it up further to our clients and make this uh, uh, certification a grand success and uh, a special mention about our mentor Sri Anil Jori sir uh, he has been always uh, uh, instrumental in bringing a lot of new new things to us in the forum of CCC. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, your initiative. And our president, Rama Ma'am, has been tirelessly working on this particular program. And I know how much uh, effort she has taken for uh, bringing all the consultants, as she was rightly saying. Many consultants, uh, they are busy now after the pandemic uh, COVID-19 situation. It's, it, one way it is good to hear, but one way they are also losing those who have not attended this session. They are, they are, they are, uh, they have lost a uh, very... Uh, what to say, informative session on this particular uh, trust, uh, uh, trust mark uh, system of certification. And I personally thank uh, uh, all the participants, all the consultants who have made up to this uh, particular session online. And uh, thanks for all the consultants who have raised a lot of questions and queries for which uh, our panelists have really uh, answered all the queries without missing anything. And I think it was a wonderful session. And thank you very much on behalf of CCC. I owe my thanks to everyone and my gratitude to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.